35 members of the executive boards of UNDP, UNFPA, UNOPS, UNICEF, WFP, and UN Women visited Uganda for five days from 29th April 2018. The team was composed of diplomats from various countries and UN representatives. It visited to review how the UN in Uganda is supporting the country to achieve its nationally-led efforts to attain sustainable development goals. We believe Uganda has great potential, and if it can manage to balance the potential of its youth and investment in infrastructure with a progressive vision for inclusive development and sustaining peace, achieving the sustainable development goals will be part of Uganda's national vision will allow it to contribute to Uganda to the Africa Vision 2063 and will also allow Uganda to achieve our global compact to achieve prosperity for all by placing people and the planet at the epicenter of our work. Rosa and the country team, uh, thank you very much for this uh, lovely uh, dinner and, and we look forward to, to the rest of the week. The rest of the week was spent in government meetings and field location visits. During field visits in Karamoja, West Nile, and Kampala, the six UN agencies showcased their work, specifically how they are supporting Uganda to achieve the 2030 Agenda and its 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Karamoja, Northeastern Uganda. It's a calm and chilly morning in Moroto, a town that sits on the foot of Mount Moroto in the Karamoja sub-region. But the beauty of Karamoja belies a harsh life. Karamoja is the least developed region of Uganda. All development indicators in Karamoja show that it is far below the national average. Uh, Beaufort's level is very high. Uh, literacy level is, uh, is low, and uh, uh, food insecurity is a problem, malnutrition is a problem. In all development indicators, we have issues. On the morning of this interview, Muhammad Sati, the UN area coordinator and head of WFP Karamoja subregion, was waiting to receive special guests. We are honored and privileged that uh, the executive board of six UN agencies are coming together. They want to see how we are operating, how we are helping the people of Uganda, the government of Uganda, in achieving their sustainable development goals. Delivering as one is the approach UN agencies are using in order to effectively address development challenges in Uganda. One reason for the body's visit is to find out how this is working. The delegation was keen to see what is on the ground, and so they hit the road, first to Rupa Health Center. The maternity wing of the health center is supported by UNFPA and UNICEF. This is the maternity, how small as it is. This is what we do ANC here, that is antenatal. We do postnatal, we even have a mother here, we've not yet discharged. We also offer family planning here. Besides the medical and family planning services offered at the health center, food is also given to the expecting and the young mothers. This is provided by the World Food Program. Karamoja is also notorious for its violence and insecurity. The UN is for this reason supporting the local police force to reverse the situation. And in Karamoja region, the police is one of the beneficiaries of the intervention of the UN agencies in terms of training, in terms of keeping transport, in terms of finance, 
and other measures to community policing in prevention of crime, uh, danger uh, women affairs. On the behalf of the police force, on the behalf of the inspector of police, the IGP, I would like to appreciate what people have done to us in Uganda and this region. I have shown you what you have done, and I'm expecting more to be done than this. <laughs> The support the UN has offered the government in its development agenda is recognized by local leaders. The UN has supported us in the form of institutional strengthening, peace, security, enhancement, environment, and social protection. Wherever it went, generous praise was heaped on the UN delegation for the development support the UN has offered Karamoja. But be that as it may, the UN called on the local governments to take a lead and ownership of the development agenda. What we need is for the local administration to be able to continue and maintain a project that has been completed by the UN system. Very often in many countries what we see is the UN comes starts a project, completes the project, and once the project is completed, there is no way of sustaining it. For a long time, the attitude toward Karamoja in Uganda has been reflected in the saying, we won't wait for Karamoja to develop. But going by recent developments in the region, that attitude is bound to shift more towards UN's SDG slogan that goes, leaving no one behind. West Nile, northwestern Uganda. With southern Sudan to its north and Congo to its west, the West Nile region of Uganda is surrounded by unstable states. From 2016, the devastation from escalating conflict in southern Sudan forced throngs of people fleeing from violence into Uganda. When I came from Sudan, I was so tortured. I was raped by a man who was um, infected by HIV. I feared to show out. I was so threatened. At the height of the conflict, thousands of desperate people with experiences similar and even worse than Susan's poured into West Nile. The UN set up reception centers to handle the influx of refugees. At the moment, the place where we are it is our MAP reception center. This is the place where for UNHCR and our partners, the place, you know, uh, for the new arrival of the South Sudanese, this is the place where we start to complete their registration procedures and the referral procedures. UN is taking a lead in providing humanitarian services to the refugees. The executive board visited the region to see what exactly and how effectively the UN agencies are delivering as one. As we all know that these women, when they come from South Sudan, they have faced a lot of challenges and trauma along the way. So we bring them together in these sessions, they interact with each other, they share experiences, they share what they've gone through, they get networks and friends and support from here. We also have the life skills activities. One of them was the outside one, baking. They engage in saloon, they learn how to play tear of the fellow women and then they play to others and get money. Then there are those who do that meeting. While UNFPA and UN women provide psychosocial support and economic empowerment skills at the Women and Girls Centre, UNICEF provides protection and education to adults and girls. But for all the good that has been done, there are still challenges. We have in different zones uh, protection information centres. That is where refugees get to interact with our staffs, and most of those structures are temporary, tarpaulin and poles. And uh, these recent rains, they even brew nearly all of them, uh, so making it a challenge for refugees to reach us or to have a space where we can interact with them. Amidst all these challenges, UN agencies are working 
with the government of Uganda day in, day out to make the refugees in the settlements feel as much at home as they possibly can. government of Uganda and the communities and the people of Uganda are extremely generous. Generous in uh, receiving uh, refugees from the neighboring countries. And I have been very much impressed by the way how the local authorities and together with the United Nations organizations, programs and funds are handling this uh, incoming number of high number of refugees Kampala UN's work is not restricted to the rural areas alone Kampala the capital city of Uganda has its share of problems Uganda has a youthful population with 7 out of every 10 people below the age of 30 Many of these young people face reproductive health challenges such as unsafe abortions, unplanned pregnancies, and HIV and AIDS. The UN board visited one of Kampala's slums, Kisenyi. Here they were received by Movubuka Agunjuse, a youth-led organization providing adolescent sexual reproductive health services. You're welcome. Amani, I'm called Sema Amba Moti Fred. Is Sema Amba Moti Fred? I'm a peer educator. Yo, you can. Okay, okay let me. <laughs> Sorry, okay, let me use the camera. Okay. I am Dim Somesa. I'm a peer educator. I also use Somesa Bavuka. Okay, Kuma about family planning, those HIV and STDs. He conducts peer education and he talks about family planning, yeah. STDs, HIV. Somesa Bavuka. Okay, Kuma about the Wasiri Mo. They talk a lot about HIV and uh, family planning <laughs> and pregnancy. <laughs> Business is a key part of what they do here. They, they do those pottery uh, metals and uh, suitcases. They make baking tins. Yeah. They target the young people. There are many who are not able to continue with school because they don't have money, so they work with those young people. There are also some of the young people who are already living positively with HIV. Some with disability. They have uh, some condom dispensers. They tell, talk to the young people not to engage in sex without use of condom. Congratulations to you and go ahead in this way. Muvubuka Gunjusi was initiated by the Kingdom of Buganda. The youth center is implementing the youth enterprise model that was developed by UNFPA. On a different side of town, the board members witnessed the handover of a vocational institute established by UNOPS in collaboration with the Korea International Cooperation Agency. This institute is funded by Koicha to support the government of Uganda in its Skilling Uganda program. So thankful to you and behalf of the ministry, we shall make a report to the minister on what is happening here already, because she wants all our young people to have a skill. She wants all our young people to be useful, to have the right values and attitude to work and go out and, go and, and uh, contribute towards the development of this country. We think that our vision can be realized by 2040, of transforming this country from what it is now to the prosperous and modern Uganda. And we cannot go there without the skills that young people need and the skills that they are going to acquire, part of which will be from here. So once again, thank you very much. Thank you, Ambassador, for coming. This technical and vocational training center is poised on draw from Korea's experience on ski, skilling and vocational training and become a benchmark for other similar projects in order to improve key skills in electricity, plumbing, welding, sewing, and motor vehicle me mechanics to stimulate Uganda's industrial development. Still in Kampala, the UN Executive Board visited the Antonio Guterres 
Urban Refugee Community Center. It is a space open for interaction and learning, helping refugees to better integrate with the community. Here, refugees learn life skills such as languages, cooking, and tailoring. Then you carry off the usual energy and put it in the Also operating in the Urban Refugee Center is the Rising Gabdo Foundation, or RGF. So I'm um, a product of a call by UNHCR and InterAid to see that the host community works with the refugee community. My life here started just right under here. We were called to sit and find solutions that could solve problems that the refugees are facing and the Ugandans as well are facing. So after a vigorous exercise, I had to listen to a number of groups. And what came out very well for me was that most of the groups had an energy as an issue. Much as they were in the urban, urban area, they say that other than rent, it was very clear for them that getting energy to cook food was very difficult. So I told UNHCR that I wanted to design a solution that would enable people to make their own energy so they do not have to spend money buying energy as much as they as well have to pay for rent. RGF started their business in the backyard of the center with refugee youth producing honeycomb briquettes made of dry agriculture waste. UNCDF entered into a co-investment partnership with RGF of $149,000 to expand the production and sales capacity of briquettes in Kampala and refugee settlements. The most important business in Kampala, though, was the meetings with government. Right Honourable Prime Minister, I'm delighted to note that the joint board meeting that you see in front of you have just returned from a visit to the field. At the field level, they were able to see what does it mean to implement the National Development Plan, including Uganda's famous refugee settlement transformative agenda. Refugees could, if worked on properly by the international community and recipient countries, turn out to be a blessing in disguise. And therefore, Uganda is doing this without any apologies, without any, we regard it as a major duty of humanity, support humanity, whenever part of humanity is in distress. But as welcoming as Uganda is to refugees, the Speaker of Parliament had demands she put before the UN board. We have been talking about the need for financing our infrastructure. If you go to West Nile, the roads that were built for the local governments have been destroyed because of the trucks. They were not made for the big trucks of the UN to drive food into those rural areas. So we need support for infrastructure. We need to support our local governments because our budget was not made for uh, that kind of for uh, heavy activity. Madam Speaker, on the issue of refugees, uh, again, we are very, very appreciative of the openness that the government of Uganda has shown, the solidarity that it continues to express when it comes to African refugees and refugees from the borders coming into the last meeting was with the president of Uganda. And so the visit came to an end on a positive note. UN and the government of Uganda are committed to their continued partnership in development and humanitarian work.